Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Fava beans are actually very well suited to replace soy and animal proteins. Um, so these are also really the applications where you will find the bulk um, of the fava bean proteins being used. Um, so looking at applications uh, like bakery, um, dairy, um, meat and fish alternatives and snacks, I would say these are the most important applications. Hello, and welcome to X-Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, why is faba bean protein gaining popularity in the food industry? Faba bean protein is a plant-based alternative that is not only catching the eye of the food industry, but is also quickly emerging as a versatile and sustainable solution for the very future of food. In this X-Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with Frederick Fernandez, Binio's product manager for functional proteins. Frederick has a background in agricultural engineering, and he joined Binio in 2022 with a strong passion for innovation and sustainability. Together, we discussed faba bean protein's benefits, applications, and environmental impact. Thank you for taking the time in this Spotlight interview, Frederick. Hello, yeah, thank you. Happy to be here and looking forward to the questions. So to start us off, could you give us a quick introduction into faba bean protein and why it's gaining popularity in the food industry? I think that's a great question to start. Faba bean is actually a crop that is being um, cultivated by humans for already many thousand years, but recently um, it has again gained popularity in the food industry. Um, and I think the main reasons for fava bean gaining popularity is, of course, uh, the protein content in itself. Um, fava beans are actually quite rich in protein content naturally. Um, so up to 30% of their content is actually protein, uh, which makes it an excellent target to extract proteins for, uh, for the food industry. Um, this protein is also high quality. Um, fava bean has an excellent amino acid, uh, amino acid profile, very balanced, uh, which makes it a great alternative to soy and animal proteins. Um, and on top of this protein content and the quality of the protein, it also has some excellent functionalities, uh, which we can exploit in different food uh, applications. Um, and of course, lastly, I think one of the more important aspects of fava beans is actually the sustainability. Um, fava beans are nitrogen fixating uh, crops, and they can also improve the soil health. And in general, they bring a lot of sustainability to the field. Um, so they're actually excellent uh, crops to actually replace um, the less sustainable crops um, like wheat and soy. And what are the main applications where faba bean protein is currently used? And could you also share the most promising applications? Faba beans are actually very well suited to replace soy and animal proteins. Um, so these are also really the applications where you will find the bulk um, of the faba bean proteins being used. Um, so looking at applications uh, like bakery, um, dairy, um, meat and fish alternatives, and snacks. I would say these are the most important applications. Um, and depending on really the specific sub-application, a different functionality of the fava bean uh, will be exploited. Um, but mainly the two biggest are really uh, bakery and dairy. Um, where on the bakery side, we are looking to replace the eggs. Um, and on the dairy side, of course, um, we are looking to replace uh, the milk proteins. So if you look at fava bean protein in general, it's a very flexible um, protein so there are really many different kinds of applications that can be used in um, and really the, all the different functionalities that fava bean can offer are also shining separately in each application and um, so all by all very flexible and a very broad uh, protein to be used in a lot of different kinds of uh, applications specifically in terms of the technical and nutritional aspects what are the main benefits of fava bean protein Looking at the technical benefits, um, I think the first one is, of course, the neutral taste and quite light color. Um, when looking at all the kinds of different applications where you want to replace animal proteins, taste is, of course, very important. Um, and then like some of the plant proteins, like soy and pea, faba bean protein has quite a mild and, uh, I would say, neutral flavor to it. So it makes it actually very excellent to do these animal protein replacements without really the need of masking agents. Um, and then looking at its color, it's also very light in color, which in, on the other hand makes it very suitable for dairy alternatives uh, or baked goods. Um, 
And uh, of course, next to the neutral T is a light color. Another technical benefit, like I already explained, is the many different functionalities that Fava Bean Protein has. Um, and by far, one of its best functionalities is emulsification. Um, it helps Fava Bean stabilize fat and water in different uh, mixtures. So it makes it really nice for dairy applications again, uh, but also for vegan dressings, where again, you try to replace egg, because of course, eggs bring a lot of uh, emulsification to the application. Um, it also has really excellent foaming uh, applications, uh, foaming functionalities. So again, it can also be used, for example, in vegan baking. Um, and then lastly, um, solubility is also quite good for fava bean. Uh, plant proteins are usually known to have really bad solubility, uh, but fava bean actually has quite a good solubility for being a plant protein, again, making it excellent for, uh, for applications like protein shakes or dairy alternatives. Um, looking at the nutritional benefits, uh, like I already explained, we had the an amino, an, uh, amino acid profile that is very balanced. Um, so it makes it excellent for again replacing soy proteins and animal proteins. And, and if you are going to combine it um, with uh, other plant proteins like wheat or rice, you can actually achieve a complete amino acid profile, which allow actually different producers to achieve uh, a protein claim. Um, also, looking at soy and wheat, they're also considered major allergens. And that's something that fava bean is actually not considered to be. So again, also having an advantage. Looking at other plant-based proteins like soy or pea, what makes fava bean protein a great alternative? I would say, again, sustainability is a very important one. Um, certainly looking at the fava beans that Beneo is choosing, we are actually growing them close to a factory that's being built in Germany. So all the farmers are also located very close to the factory with a very a short supply chain. And um, we're also growing them in an area where a not a lot of irrigation is needed. Um, looking at the sustainability point for fava bean, so in the end, they are a nitrogen fixating crop. So they can actually fixate nitrogen out of the air. And also looking actually at the lower carbon footprint that it can bring compared to mostly the imported soy and pea, because pea and soy are usually imported from outside Europe. So in that regard, it can actually be a very good candidate to have a more sustainable production. Um, and again, looking at the functionalities, solubility, emulsification, and these are properties that fava bean actually excels in compared uh, to the soy and pea proteins. Um, I would also say looking at the taste and texture, the more neutral flavor and the lighter color are also some advantages it has. Um, and in general, again, being allergen free compared to soy and pea is of course also an advantage. So compared to soy, faro bean is really uh, a good solution with regards to sustainability and being allergen free. Um, compared to pea, it's really, I would say, the neutral taste and the neutral color that can make it a better candidate. Now, could you tell us about the difference between a faba bean isolate and a faba bean concentrate? The main difference actually between um, a faba bean protein isolate and protein concentrate um, is the protein content and the processing method. Um, so protein concentrate are usually sitting between 50 to 70 percent of protein content. Um, while protein isolates are sitting between the 80 to 95 percent of protein content. And, and the reason that protein isolates have more protein inside is actually due to the processing method that is different between the two. Um, protein concentrates, like the Fabian protein concentrate of Beneo, is actually coming from a process called dry fractionation. Um, in this process, the beans are being milled and are then going through a process called air classification to separate uh, the lighter proteins from the more heavy starch fraction. Um, with protein isolates, um, the separation is a bit more complicated. So protein isolates, uh, the beans get milled and then um, the flour gets soaked into water and using actually a temperature step and an acidity step, you are going to separate the proteins from the starches. Because it's more convoluted, um, you can actually extract the protein much better from the starches, achieving this higher protein content. But of course, there are also other differences between the processes. Um, because the fava bean protein concentrate step from dry fractionation is much more simpler, you're actually retaining much more of the natural ingredients, like fiber, starch, and micronutrients. Um, and this actually have an, has an advantage in certain applications uh, where this fiber and starch can make an advantage. Like, for example, baked goods or snacks, 
uh, where they prefer to have a bit more fiber or even a bit more texture. Um, and of course, looking at sustainability, there's also a big difference um, because protein isolates require a lot of water and also some chemicals and also heating. There is much more energy and water required to make a protein isolate compared to a protein concentrate. Um, making the CO2 output of a protein concentrate much lower than that one of a protein isolate. And to wrap up, what kind of environmental impact do faba beans have? Like we already briefly touched in other questions, and the environmental impact of faba beans is very limited. And that's also exactly the reason why Beneo went for faba beans. Um, so first off, um, they are uh, European grown. So all of faba beans specifically are grown in Germany, also close to the location of a factory, having a very short supply chain. Um, and faba beans are also being used as a crop rotation crop. Um, so faba beans, because they have a lot of advantages for the soil, they improve soil health. Um, they also improve biodiversity on the field because faba beans have quite big flowers who attract pollinators, all kinds of different insects increasing the biodiversity on the field. Um, and also when fava beans are harvested, um, actually only the pots are removed from the field. So the plants stay on the field and are incorporated into the soil, increasing the organic matter of the soil for subsequent crops like sugar beet. Um, so with that regard, actually the environmental impact of fava bean is very favorable. favorable. Um, it's very low um, and it's a very sustainable crop in, with regards to CO2 output. Um, if you are going to compare it to the more grown crops like wheat and soy, uh, fava beans is really an excellent crop uh, with regards to sustainability. Again, also considering that soy a lot of the time gets imported outside Europe. Well, thank you very much, Frederick, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you too. Pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye. We look forward to learning more about Benio's innovative work in plant-based alternatives. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.